Tennessee's at-home learning series for literacy. Today's lesson is for all our fourth graders out there. Though all children are welcome to tune in, this lesson is the fourth in this week's series. My name is Valencia Smith and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune in to take in today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others. But it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about things we've learned previously. We will do a quick review of yesterday's section of the story. Today, we'll be reading the fourth part of a legend set post or after the Revolutionary War. For our lesson focus, we're going to find details about the setting, characters, and events from, from section four of the story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. For your independent, independent practice, you're going to write a narrative using details about the setting, characters, and events to finish a scene from the fourth section of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. But before we get started, in order for you to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need two pieces of paper, a pencil, a surface to write on, and the student packet for ELA Grade 4 Lesson 9, which can be found at www.tn.gov backslash education. Okay, let's begin. Remember in the previous three lessons, we have begun discussing what makes a story a legend. My legend chart is behind me. A legend usually focuses on heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting adventure. It may have some basis in historical fact and include some supernatural events. Remember, our example of something supernatural was ghosts, which I think we will hear more about in this lesson. A legend usually focuses on heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting adventure. So far, we can identify the story as a legend because it is based on some historical fact. It is, it is set during the Revolutionary War time period, which is almost 250 years ago. Today, we will continue our look at how the author uses words and phrases to describe the events. But instead of you describing the events, you're going to use the details to finish today's party scene. I will talk about how to use the words the author uses to think about the party, events, and the characters and setting of the party. Then. There will be time for you to practice thinking about the events on your own with my support. Finally, I will assign you independent work that you can complete after the video ends. This framework will follow the same structure as week one's lesson. As a quick review of our story so far, let's remember what we discussed about the events in the first three lessons. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is set among the hills beyond Terry Hall Town, Terry Town. Days in Sleepy Hollow are peaceful, while nights are scary. There is a legend in the town about a soldier who lost his head during the Revolutionary War and roams the hollow at night looking for his head. We have two main characters, Ichabod Crane and Brom Bones, both who have set their sights on, Contri on Katrina Von Tassel. Remember, if you set your sights on someone, it means you like them. Ichabod is a thin school teacher who tries to win her over by singing to her. Brum is in the town, is the town prankster, and is known as the most eligible bachelor, meaning he is unmarried and available. Together in our last lesson, we started writing an explanatory paragraph about the events in the story that you were to complete on your own. I finished my paragraph after our lesson. For those of you who weren't able to join us, it will catch you up on the events that happened in lesson three. For those of you who have your paragraph, think about how yours is similar or different from mine. Here's what I wrote. In, in section three of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, as retold by Kim Griswell, the author presented three main events. Ichabod realizes Brum wanted Katrina too. Ichabod tries to impress Katrina at church by singing, and Ichabod received a party invitation. In the beginning of part three, 
Ichabod realizes Brom's, Brom Bones liked Katrina too. Ichabod wanted Katrina's father's, father's land, and he concluded he could get the land by marrying Katrina. To get Katrina to notice him, Ichabod tried to impress her at church by singing. As he sang, he stared at Katrina. She not only stared back, but also swayed toward him. Ichabod and Katrina left the church together, where Katrina drew Brum's attention to them being together. Brum made mention of only recognizing Ichabod by his coattails. A few days after the church service, Ichabod received an invitation to a party at Katrina's house. When he received the invitation, he immediately started grooming or getting himself ready for the event and set his sights on Katrina's father's land. Section 3 of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was packed with detail about the, about the three main events. I am anxious to see what happens as Ichabod arrives at the party. Now take a moment. How was yours the same or different from mine? After reading mine out loud, as always, I could think, I think I could make it better. As I always say, good writers are always trying to make their writing better. I can improve mine by adding more detail about Ichabod singing in church. I remember how Brom acted. He snorted, his eyes narrowed, and his jaw tightened. Those details would have set up how he reacted in the churchyard. During our reading today, we will capture information about party events in the, story, in the story based on the words of the author. This will help us describe the events and use them to write our own narrative at the end of this lesson. We want you to think about what we know about the events by the details the author provides for us. Go ahead and write party events at the top of one sheet of paper. We will use this as we read our story. Let's begin. We left off yesterday when Ichabod was about to arrive at the Von Tossel's party, Katrina's parents' home. Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow as retold by Kim T. Griswell, part four. The party was in full swing when Ichabod arrived. Farmers strutted about in their best homespun, which means not bought in the store, coats and breeches. Their wives swished around in a calico, a type of fabric, dresses, while their daughters sported straw hats with fine ribbons. Their sons tugged at tails of short, square-skirted coats with shiny brass buttons. Into the middle of, of all, of it all rode Brumbones on Daredevil. A gaggle, or group, of young girls soon surrounded him. The author is spending some time here describing the party scene so we can visualize it in our minds. Let me reread the first line. The party was in full swing when Ichabod arrived. Have you heard this expression before? If something is in full swing, it is well beyond just starting. In this case, most of, most of the guests were probably already there, and the guests were enjoying themselves when Ichabod arrived. If you have joined me in previous lessons, we have talked about coattails. Use what we have discussed to think about where the sons were pulling. Their sons tugged at coattails of short, square-skirted coats with shiny brass buttons. Remember Brum talked about recognizing Ichabod by his coattail, which is the bottom of the back of a coat. So, the sons are pulling on the backs of their coats. What do these sentences tell you about Brum? Into the middle of it all rode Brum Bones on Daredevil. A gaggle, or a group, of young girls soon surrounded him. It sounds like to me he was the center of attention because all of the girls were standing around him. I can really visualize this scene in my head, but I want to be able to remember it later when I'm writing my narrative or story. Let's take a few notes about the setting, 
character, and events during the party to help us. We talked about the party being in full swing, so I'm going to write that on my paper. Be sure to write notes as I do. I'm going to, I made an S after a party in full swing because it gives me details about the setting of the party. So here's full swing and then my S because it tells me about the setting. I also heard the guests were all dressed in their best clothes. I'm going to add that too because it tells me about the characters. I'm going to write a C behind it. Guests were all well dressed. Next, Brum Bones is at the center of attention is important too. I'm going to add it and I'm going to put a C behind it because it also tells me about character. Did you add all of these to your chart too? Great, thanks. Having some details to, re to reference how this author gave us information about the setting characters and events will help you when you write your own narrative or story. Katrina Van Tassel watched the light, the tight lift from the front porch when she, I'm sorry, let's read that again. Katrina Van Tassel watched tight lift from the front porch. When she caught sight of Ichabod, she waved buoyantly, her tight lips loosening into a too broad smile. Mr. Crane, I'm so glad you came. Do come inside. Brumbones reared his horse. Daredevil's front hooves flailed. Show off while you can, Ichabod chuckled to himself. Your days as a guest at the Van Tassel estate are about to end. Hmm. Katrina is watching Brumbones and the gaggle, or group, tight-lipped from the porch. What can you infer that that means? When I'm tight-lipped, I'm either thinking hard or upset about something. I'm wondering if Katrina might be a little upset about the girls around Brum. Maybe she is a little jealous. I think it's because she went from tight-lipped to a too broad smile. Like perhaps she is faking her smile. But we'll see. I'm going to write Katrina too broad smile on our chart with a C behind it because it tells me about the character. And I also added porch, which is where Katrina was, because it tells me about the setting. Now, what can you infer about Ichabod's words under his breath to Brum? Because he says, your days as a guest at the Van Tassel estate are about to end, I think Ichabod already thinks he has won Katrina. I'm going to add that to our chart with a C because it tells us about our character. Now, Ichabod followed Katrina to the banquet table, which is a really long table. She stood in open-jawed awe, meaning her mouth was open, as he heaped his plate with broiled fish, roasted chicken, and boiled beef. Then she bade, or told him, enjoy his meal, and took her leave. Ichabod imagined himself lord of the manor, sending her off to attend to their guests. Then he helped himself to some honey cakes, crumbling crullers, and slices of peaches and pumpkins and apple pie. He ate and ate until his stomach burst the button on his dusty black jacket. What did you take from this section about the setting? I heard that there were piles of food. And there should be an S behind that because it describes our setting. Now, I want to look at this line a little closer. Ichabod imagined himself Lord of the Manor, sending her off to attend to their guests. What does this tell you about Ichabod? 
Good. I know a Lord is someone who rules, and a manor is another name for a large house. So I can tell that he is already thinking about himself being the owner of Katrina's father's house. He is also thinking about lording over Katrina because he talks about sending her off to attend to their guests. I'm going to add Ichabod imagine himself as Lord of the Manor and a place of C after it because it tells me about the character to our chart. Now after supper, Ichabod joined the men in the drawing room. He listened with great interest to their tales of haunted fields, haunted brooks, haunted bridges, and haunted houses. See here, Crane, Warmer Van Tessel held up a worn, a work-worn hand. A man of learning such as yourself must have a head filled with more than local legends. Oh, indeed, Ichabod nodded, and his head bobbled along. I am a great reader of books. My favorite is Cotton Mather's History of New England Witchcraft. History, he said, explains so much. Drawing room. This is a great setting to add to this party event. And I'm going to put an S after it because it tells about the set. During the Revolutionary War period, and sometimes still today, a large room that is meant for entertaining is called a drawing room. It does not mean that they were literally drawing. Did you hear their topic of conversation? Everything haunted. What is the word we have been talking about that would label the topic of this conversation? Did you remember the word? Great, it was supernatural. Great word to add as a detail. I think I will label it with an E because it's an event at the party. So we have our word supernatural, conversation, and we put an E. We're picking back up in the middle of the men's supernatural conversation. What history explained, he never said. For that moment, Katrina walked into the room. Can I bring you anything, Father? She asked. No, thank you, my dear. The former patted her smooth white hand. Go and enjoy yourself with your friends. As Katrina left the room, the school teacher's heart thudded. What would it be like to hold that soft white hand? Mr. Crane, Brum Bones interrupted the teacher's thoughts. Have you heard about the night my daredevil outran the galloping Hessian? Hessian is the name for a German soldier. No, Ichabod nose twitched like a rat on the scent of spoiled cheddar. I have not. Well, Brum Bones leaned forward. It happened on a night much like this one. I was on my way home from a party at this very farm. I had just passed the church and was headed for the bridge that crosses the stream into Sleepy Hollow when I heard the hoofbeats at my back. Ichabod's glassy green eyes went wide. Hoofbeats? Indeed, Brum nodded. Louder and louder they came. It was like none other. It was none other than the headless horseman. Brum glanced at the school teacher with a wink and a nod. I was near the churchyard where the fiend, another name for demon, is buried. Up ahead was, was the one lane bridge. At my side was the ghost. This is some awesome information for us to record. What is happening here? Yes, Brum is basically telling a ghost story about the time he claims he saw the headless horseman. Let's add that to our chart. Brum told the Headless Horseman story. We're going to put an E because it's an event. I'm going to reread a line. Think about what this tells you about how Ichabod is responding to the story. No. Ichabod's nose twitched like a rat on the scent of spoiled cheddar. I have not. I think Ichabod does not like the idea of hearing the story because he scrunches his nose like he's smelling spoiled cheddar, which is a type of cheese. 
Let's add, Ichabod does not want to hear the headless horseman story to your paper. And we're going to put a, that's right, a C behind it because it's telling us about a character. We also heard more about the hoofbeats. Why is this important in the story? For those of you who are following through with all the lessons, you might, you might remember that haunted hoofbeats was a sound in Sleepy Hollow at night. Also, hoofbeats were heard when Ichabod met a horseman at night near the same place Brum is describing. Remember, it scared him so badly that he raced home and locked his door. What was Ichabod's reaction to this? The text says his glassy eyes went wide because your eyes go wide when you are scared. I think he was scared because he remembered his own night of hearing the hoofbeats. Let's add the talk of hoofbeats scared Ichabod and write a C after it for character. We have a lot to add to our chart today. Now, Ichabod glanced around. With Brumbone spinning or telling the story and the other men listening, surely he could slip away. It was time to make his case to the fair Katrina. This means he was going to tell her how he feels. The teacher edged toward the door, hoping his exit would go, un go unnoticed. He found Katrina alone in the parlor a smaller room in the house for entertaining, and drew the door closed behind him. What happened in that room? No one knows. But a few short minutes later, Ichabod Crane stormed into the hall. His face was moon pale. His fists were clenched, and his great saucer ears were as red as smashed tomatoes. She had tricked him, used him to make the horse-riding buffoon Brum Bones jealous. How dare she? Ichabod rushed from the house. He yanked his plow horse from the feed bag and swung his bony frame, or body, into the saddle. Oh my, what a turn of events. I must add that Ichabod told Katrina how he feels to our chart, and I'm going to put an E behind it. But how does Ichabod feel when he leaves the parlor, and how do you know? I think he's upset. His face is described as moon pale. His face probably lost color because he was shocked. Also, his fists are clenched. His ears are red and he leaves immediately. All signs that he is upset. I'm gonna add that to our chart as well. We're gonna put Ichabod was upset after talking to Katrina and put a C behind it. Now Ichabod realized that he had been used by Katrina. What, why does he, why does she use him? Great listening, you guys, to make Brum Bones jealous. Let's add that to our chart. And here it is at the bottom. And we're gonna put a, that's right, a C behind it because it describes our character. Fantastic. Let's look at all the notes we have captured about the party. We have thought deeply about how the author is providing us with details about the setting, characters, and smaller events that were happening at the party. It is going to be so much fun to write from these details. Now, look at your chart and let's review what we have. For setting, we've captured full swing, porch, piles of food, and drawing room. And for characters, here are some details we felt were more important from the party. Guests were all dressed, Brum Bones at the center of attention, Katrina, too broad smile, Ichabod thinks he has already won Katrina, Ichabod imagined himself as the lord of the house, and Ichabod does not want to hear the story, the talk of hoof beats, hoof beats scared Ichabod, Ichabod told Katrina how he feels, and now he's upset, and Katrina used Ichabod to make Brum jealous. And for the event that occurred at the party, we wrote, let's see, Supernatural Conversation and Brum told Headless Horseman's story. Horseman's story. Now, think about how all the details about the setting, 
characters, and smaller events within the party work together to make it interesting to read. This lesson is not the end of our story. We have one final section to read in our next lesson. We are leaving off with Ichabod leaving the party. What do you think might happen next? I want you to turn your paper over. I'm going to ask you a few questions and, what you jot, and want you to jot down the answers to help you prepare to write your narrative. Using the details you have written on your paper, how might you use them as clues to what happens next? Circle four details we recorded today that will be helpful in your own writing. What will Ichabod do? How will Brum react to Ichabod leaving? Will Katrina react? What is your setting? Will your setting be at the party or will it move somewhere else? In your writing, I really want you to think about how you would describe the setting, characters, and other events to finish the story. Because we are writing a narrative or a story, I want, you to, I want to review what makes a good fourth grade narrative. Consider how you will organize your ending so it will make sense with what occurred at the party. How might you add dialogue or people talking? How will you use transitional words? Be sure to use your best grammar and punctuation. Now for your independent work, it's time for it's your turn to write. I want you to write an ending to the story using the details from our chart about setting, characters, and events. Start from these lines. She tricked him. Used him to make the horse riding buffoon Brumbones jealous. How dare she? Ichabod rushed from the house. He yanked his plow horse from the feed bag and swung his bony frame into the saddle. Remember, the chart you created with me about the party will be very helpful to use. Have fun. I wish I could read your story. Boys and girls, as always, I've enjoyed reading about the events in Section 4 of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your homes. I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Bye-bye.